Hello, this is Maria Riccelli from BNC Software. Yes, I'm technical marketing. Today, I'm going to show you how to navigate the business service view we have released as part of TrueSci Capacity Optimization version 11.5. In order to access the business service view, you need first to log in into the TrueSci console and then point to the menu on the left hand side and navigate to business services under capacity views. By accessing the business service view, you will be presented with the main page where you have five different panels. First, on the top left hand corner, you have a summary panel which shows the total number of services listed by forecasted saturation. This correlates with the saturation by service category graph on the right hand side where a new dimension was added as custom dimension. This time was importance. So you can see we have the importance as category and with the four different levels, low, medium, high, and critical. In the bottom, you see there are three different additional panels. One on the left-hand side related to service by provider, which is a pie chart. In the middle, there is a usage histogram and on the right hand side, a risk pie chart, which does help you to understand how many services you have in an healthy status, in a warning status and in a saturated status. From the main page, you can drill down on the next level. As an example, I'm going to focus on the critical uh, server service that I have in a saturation status. So I'm going to drill down uh, to get additional information to those services. You see here that we have three different services listed. Well, I'm going to focus on the custom support management service. Under this service, I have two different applications defines education and service. Please keep in mind that this is not mandatory to have applications defined under business services. So for example, in the case of the procurement service management, I don't have any application defined, but I have four different service pools defined as part of this service. Now, let's focus on the service application under the customer support management. You see that for each application, I'm provided with the indication about the usage and the risk related to resources associated to that application under the business service of interest. First, usage is based on average over the last 30 days. And this in essence an indication of how much capacity I'm using with respect to the allocated capacity that uh, is associated to my service pool. Whereas the risk is uh, really a combination of uh, uh, max value and the usage trend in the last 30 days. So if there is at least an element in the business services that is at risk, the risk will be bubble up until the business service level. Now, let's focus on the application pool as an example, and let's click on this red triangle to get to the next level on the service pool detail page. For the application pool, I can see that I have three different VM associated, and I can immediately get information in the summary tab related to usage and risk associated to this pool and a nice chart which is representing the utilization over the last 30 days. In addition, I can jump on the servers tab, which represents the elements that are contained in my pool. We have, in this case, three different VMs, and we can further investigate on each element included. As an example, we can focus on this VM. I'm provided with information related to usage and risk related to this VM. I can mouse over to each of those indicators to understand why I'm getting those values. For, for example, the usage score is 62, and it's a combination of CPU, memory, and storage with the related weights usage score. The risk, instead, is 97, and its total risk is shown as max value of CPU, memory, and storage risk values. So in this case, it's really a representation of the CPU risk value, which is contributing the most, which is already in a saturation status. If we focus on the usage instead, and we, we mouse over on CPU, we can see that it's 94, and it's based on 95 percentile value of CPU utilization. We can also get additional information by drilling down on the specific VMs and access the detail page of the specific VM associated to each service pool. From here, you can see that you get information about CPU, memory, network, and disk transfer rate over time. And in addition to that, 
actionable information that uh, we know uh, are represented by recommendations. Thanks for watching.